I have a six chamber revolver. I place two bullets in adjacent chambers. I spun it, took aim at your head and pulled the trigger. Congratulations, you're still alive. Now I'm going to pull the trigger one more time. Which one would you prefer? I don't spin again and just pull the trigger or spin again before pulling the trigger. Survive and the job is yours. Note that for a revolver, after each pull of the trigger, the cylinder advances by one chamber. Your first spin landed on an empty chamber and now the cylinder may or may not be empty. For any arrangement of two adjacent bullets, the chambers look like this. Our choice depends on if there is a bullet in the current chamber if we fire without spinning or if we fire after spinning. The probabilities of there being a bullet in the chamber in the latter case is simply 2 over 6 since there are two chambers possible from six chambers. For the former case, since the first chamber was empty, this narrows down the positions down to four chambers. Of the four, only this chamber has a bullet coming up. Hence, the probability of encountering a bullet is one in four. Since the former has a lower probability than the latter case, we should fire without spinning again. The interviewer realized this was too easy. For the next candidate, he once again has two bullets, this time in randomized chambers. He spins, fires an empty chamber and presents the same options, spin or not to spin. Because the chambers are randomized, let's number the chambers for clarity. Consider how many arrangements of two bullets in six chambers there are, or how many combinations of two elements from six can we choose. This would be six choose two, being 15 combinations of chambers. Why 15? Well, if we have to pick two chambers from six, we have six options followed by five, giving us six times five's options. But since each of these options consists of identical combinations such as the following, we have to divide the number of options by the number of identical combinations for each unique one, which is two. After some math, we arrive at the formula above. These 15 arrangements can be classified in the following ways. They can be adjacent to each other, of which there are six. They can be one chamber apart, being another six positions. Or they can be spaced two chambers apart, of which there are three. This brings the total to 15 as expected. Any other arrangements will just be repeats of what's here. The probabilities of the two bullets being in these respective arrangements are hence 6 over 15 for adjacent bullets, 6 over 15 for those space 1 apart, and 3 over 15 for those space 2 apart. Since each arrangement may have different possibilities of encountering a bullet, the probability of encountering a bullet placed in two randomized chambers without a respin is the following. The sum product of each arrangement and its associated conditional probability of encountering a bullet, it is a sum because these three situations are mutually exclusive, hence we can sum the terms. For the case of adjacent bullets, the conditional probability is 1 over 4 as calculated previously. For the other two cases, for two bullets spaced one chamber apart, the cylinder will look like this. The first spin will have landed in four of the empty chambers. Of these, two will have the bullet coming up next. Hence, the conditional probability is 2 over 4. For the situation of the bullets spaced two chambers apart, the cylinder will look like this. The first spin will have landed in four of the empty chambers and of these two will have a bullet coming up next, hence the conditional probability is once again 2 over 4. Now that we have all the pieces, we can calculate the probability of encountering a bullet without a respin, which works out to 2 over 5 or 0 0.4. For the same probability with a respin, this is simply two bullets out of six chambers or 0 0.333 as we are simply resetting the probability of encountering a bullet. Since the former has a higher probability than the latter case, the candidate should fire after a respin. The interviewer is determined to kill the next candidate. He now has three bullets in randomized chambers. He spins, fires an empty chamber and presents the same options to the candidate, to spin or not to spin. Look, I get it, it's tiring. Take a break and learn about my experience applying for quant roles so you don't miss out on any step of the process by clicking the link on the top right. Now back to the question. We are now considering arrangements of three bullets in six chambers, or combinations of three elements from six. This would be six choose three equals 20 combinations of chambers. These 20 arrangements can be classified in the following ways. They can be adjacent to each other, of which there are six. They can be spaced as two adjacent and another separated by one chamber. These can be easily considered by first picking two adjacent chambers and then selecting the next chamber separated by one, as seen in the first column, or 
picking one chamber and then selecting the next two adjacent chambers separated by one chamber, as seen in the second column. This gives another 12 combinations. Lastly, they can be spaced one chamber apart, of which there are two combinations. This brings the total to 20 as expected, and any other arrangements will just be repeats of what's already here. The probabilities of the three bullets being in these respective arrangements are hence 6 over 20 for adjacent, 12 over 20 for two adjacent separated by one chamber, and finally 2 over 20 for one apart. The probability of encountering a bullet placed in three randomized chambers without a respin is the following sum product. The conditional probabilities associated with each of these three cases will be the following. For the adjacent bullets, the cylinder will look like this. The first spin will have landed in three of the empty chambers of this one will have a bullet coming up next, hence the probability is 1 over 3. For the two adjacents and another separated by one chamber, two out of the three empty chambers will have a bullet coming up next, hence the conditional probability is 2 over 3. Lastly, for three bullets spaced one chamber apart, all three empty chambers will have a bullet coming up next, hence a conditional probability of 1. With all this in place, the probability of encountering a bullet without a respin is 3 over 5 or 0 0.6. For the same probability with a respin, this is simply 3 bullets out of 6 chambers or 0 0.5. Since the former has a higher probability than the latter case, the candidate should fire after a respin. The interviewer is out for blood. He uses 4 bullets this time in randomized chambers. He spins, fires an empty chamber, and presents the same options to the next candidate, to spin or not to spin. We are now considering a, an arrangement of 4 bullets in 6 chambers. This would be 6 choose 4, or 15 combinations of chambers. These 15 arrangements can be classified in the following ways. They can be adjacent to each other, of which there are 6. They can be spaced as 3 adjacent and another separated by 1 chamber. This gives another 6 combinations. Lastly, they can be spaced as 2 pairs of adjacent chambers spaced 1 chamber apart, of which there are 3 combinations. This brings the total to 15 as expected, and any other arrangement will just be repeats of what's here. The probabilities of the 4 bullets being in these respective arrangements are hence the following. The probability of encountering a bullet placed in 4 randomized chambers without a respin is once again the sum product of the following equation. The conditional probabilities associated with each of the three cases will be the following. For adjacent bullets, the cylinder will look like this. The first spin will have landed in two of the empty chambers. Of this, one will have one bullet coming up next, giving it the probability of 1 over 2. For three adjacents and another separated by one chamber, all of the empty chambers will have a bullet coming up next, hence the conditional probability is 1. Similarly, for the case of two pairs of adjacent bullets spaced one apart. With all these pieces, the probability of encountering a bullet without a respin is 4 over 5 or 0 0.8. For the same probability with a respin, this is 4 bullets out of 6 chambers, which is 0 0.667. Since the former has a higher probability than the latter case, the candidate should fire after a respin. What about 5 bullets? Well, if you're lucky enough to hear a click once, your next shot without a respin will always contain a bullet. So you should always ask for a respin for a probability of 1 out of 6 of surviving. For 6 bullets, this question is too easy for you. Check out this other one from Jane Street. 